Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. We finally have the lower hull of our Yag Panther back from the sandblasters and are ready to start putting this enormous jigsaw puzzle together. A lot of people have asked about if we can provide a little bit more history on the vehicles that we're restoring. Unfortunately, that's a little bit easier said than done, as oftentimes the parts that we get have changed hands quite a number of times in the last 80 years or so. And even if some parts all come from a single vehicle, often it is nearly impossible to find accurate historical records on that vehicle itself. But wherever we do manage to find information, we'll definitely be sure to let you know. So sit back, relax, and enjoy episode four of the Yag Panther. We've been sourcing Yag Panther parts for over half a decade. The finished vehicle will be made of a mix of Yag Panther parts that saw service somewhere on the Eastern Front in late 1944 and new steel. We also came across a gold mine of new old stock that was recovered from an old tank factory just outside of Berlin, which was only recently unearthed. Before assembly, all parts of the lower hull had to be sent away to be sandblasted to remove rust and corrosion. The parts then have a primer applied to protect the bare metal from moisture. It's really humid here in far north Queensland. Now we have everything back, we can start to assemble the lower hull. We have a fantastic collection of parts here, and this isn't even all of it. You'll have to subscribe and hit the bell button to keep up to date with this incredible project, as we've got a lot more goodies to show you. We're starting the Yag Panther hull sides. We've got to key the front in, which means we've got to stand one side up, get it nice and square, put our front in, and then once the front's all nice and square, then we can put our other side in. Daz and Jess have bolted these bits of plate into the workshop floor so they can keep the first hull side fixed in position. You can see me jump here. Those minute adjustments can be really loud. With this first side fixed into place, the boys move on to the lower glacius plate. They would have done this all on a jig. We don't have anything like that, so we've got to make with what we've got. We've got these welded in now, it's nice and square. The next part we'll be putting the front plate in. We've got to line it all up. They'll go in here, on these surfaces in here. The Germans weren't super accurate with this. They've, they've allowed themselves a lot of room to pack and play. So when we put it together, there'll probably be a bit of a bit of a gap all the way around, but but that's how they did it back then too. Jack up there, get him up a bit better. So we're going to come up a bit here and it's got to be basically flush down to there. So at the moment we're just bringing that, that front edge up and then we'll just see how it works for our lines and that. Jess is onto it now, pumping hard. <laughs> Yeah, that's 
bit more? No, 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 no more, no more. That's it. It's up now. Yeah, but it's still got to go up from there. It's just got to go in now. It's just got to come in now, pretty much. I reckon we'll, we'll tack something on here and we'll pull it over. How's that, Daryl? Can you, uh... Beautiful. That needs to go up a bit, doesn't it? No, that wants to go down a bit. And there's, how's yeah, it look for our line? This one wants to go up a bit, and that one's about right. And we're pretty good. Hopefully. Yeah, they're in my um, toolbox. I got another one there anyway. It's all good. on the bench. You'll be able to knock these out, eh? You get a hammer big enough and hit here, you knock them straight out. Going well? Yeah, well, if you plumb down here, you can't come out past here, and it's, it's spot on there. And then you look across here, it's pretty much right there. Just a little bit of uh, final prep, and it should be good. I'm very happy with it. These blue frames will act as braces for the vehicle. They're obviously not accurate, but since this will only be a static exhibit, they're necessary to maintain structural integrity. Well, the top, and we'll just need to. We'll just, we'll just take that square. And... Oh, it'd be nice if. Just hit it, just say how you go. Do you want me to just see if I can solid trick it? Daryl's good with a hammer. It's a lot of He's good with a hammer. We're going to go about 2 mil, Jess. Can I um bring it up your hand then? Up here, hold on. Yep, stop there. Stop right there. Perfect. Hold him right there. The T-34 wasn't happy at seeing the Ag Panther being brought back to life right next door to it, and it tried to make a break for it out of the workshop, but luckily our mechanic team reined her in. After tacking these braces, Jess went to pack out the keys in the side and lower front plate and has found something quite interesting. We've put the original keys back in 
and they're in the exact same spot. You can see that this this pack in here is way bigger than this one over here. So that's that's the original ones, how they went in. And miraculously, they've, they've went in exactly how they were. What's so remarkable is that the front and the side are from two different vehicles, and yet the packers fit perfectly. Everything is tacked in and secure. Now it's time for the floor to be hoisted in place. You don't get muscle like Jess, or Glenn, or Bo, by using an automatic gantry. Send a young bloke Jess in underneath the tank here to, to weld the base supports. When we go to weld the sides, we don't want it to buckle, so we've got supports in the bottom that's, that's keeping the uh, tank rigid. So Jess is just under there now welding them. drink of water. Oh, I do. <laughs> I very much do. At times it may seem like this series is more about welding than it is World War II vehicle restoration. But the reality is that this is a huge part of the process. We hope that by showing you every step of the journey, 
you can really appreciate the amount of work and dedication that goes into these vehicles. Twenty twenty one has been a big year for the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum. The workshops are making the final push before taking a well deserved break and then firing back up in the new year. So tune in next Wednesday as we give you a final update on all our projects. Watch me test drive our newly restored Kubelwagen and then have a bit of a laugh at me as Bo attempts to teach me how to weld on the Stug 3. So until then, I'm Kurt from Ozama, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>